How you going, mate? Adam Will, how are you? Yeah, good. Good. You hear me all right? Yeah, no problem at all. How's things, mate? Everything good? Yeah, just back in the Brumbies world, mate. So. Did, did you get end up getting much of a break after last year? Uh, yeah, so we got back, uh, I don't know if you knew, but I left after the whale, after the England game. Um, so they'd given me that opportunity probably a couple of, uh, couple of months before Webby and Dave, um, just knowing that I had to come back here. Um, so that Wales week, I pretty much coached via WhatsApp and Zoom. And then um, um, had two weeks in quarantine after the England game and then yeah, a couple of weeks in Brisbane, 10 days up the coast, another week or two back in Brisbane. So, yeah, no, it was a decent break. Mate, it seemed like um, – mate, do you mind if we just rip in? Just to get started. Yeah, yeah. You just let me know, mate. Sweet, mate. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just rolling from now. But what was yep. 2022 like for you? How do you, how do you look back on it? Because for, for me, looking on the outside, it looked like a pretty crazy year for you personally. How did you feel about it? Uh, yeah, no, look, a really long year. Um, there's no doubt, um, and, and certainly challenging at times um, from an individual and, and, and family perspective, but but also really enjoyable. Um, like most coaching years, you you know you, you experience all the, all the emotions. Um, that's professional sport. Um, you know you had the Super Rugby AU competition uh, beaten five minutes after uh, after full time. Uh, that was a tough one. Going to the French series, or sorry, the Trans Tasman first, and, and um, you know we we're pretty battered by that competition. Um, really pleasing to expose a number of our young players uh, and give them opportunity against the best in the world. Really knocked off the Crusaders in uh, in Christchurch. Um, then you go in and, and, and represent your country, you know, and and be a part of the, a, a Wallaby group. And for me, that was a dream, you know, always, always has been. It's a dream as a player initially, and then to do it as a coach was, um, yeah, just an enormous privilege. And that French series was pretty special. Um, just you know, really enjoyable to be a part of. Um, you're sitting in the coach's box. Um, you know, going through the All Black experience, which you've sat on the couch for many years and, and sort of viewed a lot of good things. And, and then, you know, we just sort of hurt ourselves at, at key moments. And then you roll into uh, knocking off the world champions a couple of times, the Argentinians, uh, and then the spring tour. So it was, you know, it was, uh, it was uh, the, the, the full bag uh, of emotions. But, um, you know, it, it look, a long, tiring year, but, Mate, I'm not digging holes here. Um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm doing something I love, and something that's uh, it's not tough to get out of bed um, when, when you when you're going to work and, and, and coaching rugby every day of the week. If you had have told me that 20 years ago that that's what your career is going to be, then you'd, you'd take it at the drop of a hat. I feel very privileged and, and grateful for the for the position that I'm in. Hey, looking back, so you said you did some coaching via WhatsApp and Zoom. So I, I guess that's pretty much a sign of the last couple of years, really, just having to adapt and, you know, be flexible on the run. But what other challenges in terms of coaching did you face over the last couple of years? Because, you know, young man in bubbles and all the psychological and emotional stuff going on and then dealing with people's families and mm. then you've got to actually coach rugby and and – help improve a team and a group of men was there any challenges or or things that you could pick out from the last couple of years that stand out to you oh yeah you know it's it's uh it's it's been an enormous challenge we've had to adapt um even before covid for us uh like we the beginning of uh 2020 um you know canberra was uh well amongst the uh the bushfires um that you know that were um a, a tragic event um we then had mumps go through uh, the brumbies oh, did you? Uh, which was uh which was pretty rare uh we had a number of players uh get the mumps myself included and and, and a couple of other of the staff so uh, and i remember chatting to phil thompson after we got through the mumps and he said covid will be next and i just laughed um and sure enough uh, a few weeks later the uh, Sunwolves game that was meant to be played in Tokyo was moved to uh, Wollongong. Uh, we played them there and then we played the Tars the following week on a Sunday afternoon in Canberra. Played really well. We were sitting equal top of the uh, Super Rugby table um, and the competition got suspended. 
and all of a sudden you're in you're in bubbles uh, where you can't do anything, you can't train. Um, we had to split the gym up amongst the playing group. The training in groups of four. Um, eventually, we, you know, we, we got back to playing, but you're, you're in a situation where, where you're locking young men up. You know, you're caging young men up. They, their partners can't do this or that. They can't go to the gym. Um, the boys can't go and grab a coffee. You know, go, go, go to the pub and have a beer, have a night out, have have a meal. These, you know, these are all things that uh, that young men do from from one day to the next. So it was. It was really challenging for them and, and, and tough for, for some individuals in particular who couldn't get back to see their family, whether it be in New Zealand or if borders were closed, um, partners that couldn't see their family. So no, it was it was an enormous challenge. Um, but like, like everything for for me, how, you know, how do you deal with any sort of challenges? You just got to talk to the boys. You know, you just got to make sure that you're there for them, let them know that um, that uh, you know you understand their situation and, and that. Um, as a coach, as a you know, as a team, as an organisation, that, that that we're there to support them and care for them when we need to. What about jumping up into the Wallabies this year? Did anything surprise you making that step up, or was it because you'd had so much experience with the Brumbies and work with a lot of the guys? Was it pretty seamless, or how did you feel about that? Uh, yeah, to be honest, it was pretty seamless. Um, you know, it, again, it's. It's it's the highest level of the game. Look, the, the challenging part is is that uh, you've got uh, five clubs that uh, make up the team, or five franchises. You've got to bring them together within a couple of weeks um, and, and get them all on the same page and get them aligned um, and get them to buy into how you do things. Obviously, how I've done things at the Brumbies and you know th- things that I'd present on for the first time that you know Ten Tupo. Or, or, or Lucan would be hearing, you know, James Slipper and Scott Seo or Allen could, could do the presentation themselves, you know. So it's just uh, that, that's the challenge is getting alignment and getting buy-in. Um, but we had that from day one. Um, you know, I was really impressed with, the, with, with all the players, the boys from the other franchises, just with, with their thirst to, to want to learn and, and improve and, and, and get better. Um, I, I, sorry, I was just going to say, I guess one of the positives to come out of COVID from a Wallabies perspective is you had them for a long period of time this year which I, I guess you wouldn't get normally. But I, I've been thinking about this a little bit my own. So in Super Rugby, you got guys all year round. So you can put a lot of work into them, yeah. improve them as players athletically, as well as building the team. H- how do you think about that when you go into the Wallaby environment? Because you, you've got the best players in our country and obviously every, every single player can still improve, but you've only got a limited amount of time. And I'm guessing the team and performance has to be the priority and then development is something guys have to sort of work on as a secondary. Yeah. As as a forwards coach and a the head coach, how did you think about that? Yeah, you certainly got to prioritise your time. Um, and, and as I said, the, the first thing is, is, is alignment. So, you know, you're really focusing on, on your system um, and how, how you're going to do things, uh, the process within that system. So, you know, making sure that... Um, uh, we were nailing and, 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 and doing exactly how we wanted to do uh, our line out attack, our line out defense, our mall and mall defense, uh, and, and, and just getting them all on the same page there. And then in the background, um, you know, as a coach, you're always uh, reviewing training, reviewing games, cutting individual clips. Uh, that, that's, when, that's when, you know, it might be the beauty of being in camp um, is, is you can grab a player at 7.30 at night and say, mate, I've got a half a dozen clips to go through if you come and have a look and, and um, and, that, and that's where you can really help develop the individual. I mean, the difference with Super Rugby is is that you've got months to you've got months to develop uh, players, uh, nurture players, uh, bring them on uh, over time. Um, you've got months to work on on your, your environment and your culture. Um, so so it is very different. I think the the, the benefit the Wallabies benefited off the back of um, you know the six Test matches that they played at the end of two thousand and twenty. Um, Dave had an opportunity there to, to mould that group, um, lay down um, the, the, the platform for, for what his environment and what he expects uh, from each individual and, and, how, and how the group would, would function and work. So I think that six weeks or, or that's, those six games are really beneficial. And then this year it was, um, you know, just adding the layers um, that, that, were, that were better down at, at the end of 2020. But um, look, it's a challenge, but you've got to remember you're also working with the best players in the country. They pick things up quickly. 
uh, they adapt quickly, uh, they learn quickly, and and um, and and you know within uh, a short period of time, you've got them in a position where they can play and perform at Test match level. What about going back to the Brumbies? So, so something I've noticed at club level is you've got you've got guys who are fringe Super Rugby players or good enough to fit into a Super Rugby team, and then you've got guys on the other end of the spectrum. And I'm I'm guessing with the Brumbies, you've got you know your James Slippers of the world, and then you've got your young props who are just coming in. How do you how do you think about developing those young guys? Is it a matter of just giving them clips and going, hey, you need to work on your inside shoulder at loose head, or you know, and just giving them things to work on in their own time to really squeeze as much of the juice out of them as possible? Because you know, if, if Slips gets injured, you're going to have to throw one of these guys in. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a long process. Um, you know, there's there's a number of different ways how, how you coach and develop. Uh, it's obviously in the moment. Um, firstly, you know, giving them an opportunity and exposing them to this environment is, is the first step. Um, and then it's, it's coaching them within the moment. It's coaching them uh, with vision and feedback. Um, you know, the, the, the best coaches for me are the ones that can see the picture, whether it be positive or, or negative at that very moment. Um, but on the other hand, you don't want to be wasting 50% of your training time uh, talking. You know, you lose intensity or lose the opportunity to, to get through the work you need to get through. So, um, yeah, vision, uh, a lot of, you know, micro chat, small, small conversations. I like to meet with, meet with my players uh, regularly, give them feedback, let them, let them know where they sit. And, um, and, you know, you talk about young, young front rowers. Well, you probably haven't got a better environment for a young, to, to be a young front rower than to be at the Brumbies with I agree. You know, Ola Tawa, yeah. Slipper. Um, you know, Dan Palmer for me is uh, one of the best scrum coaches getting around. Um, so it's a pretty good place to be, you know. Um, and then myself and, and Laurie are, uh, are Ford's coaches uh, as well. So, you know, we, we share the workload. Uh, it's, it's a long process. Um, you got to understand that, um, you know, coming from a, a, being a young uh, prospect at club rugby level as a front row to, to, to becoming a super rugby player, doesn't uh, doesn't happen overnight. You got to be very patient, and make sure, from my point of view as head coach, that that when I do expose them, that they're ready, and that they're ready to perform and and, and thrive, and not just fill a jersey and, and make up the numbers. Do you do that gradually, like give them give them some time in the match day squad, and then maybe a little bit here and there? Like, yeah. do, do you have a process for that, or is it yeah. sometimes just throw them in the deep end? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it's black and white, but but it is. You know, you, like you, firstly, they're they're in the program. They might come in and do the preseason uh, with us. Um, I look at someone like Fred Go here, who's a young loose head prop within our program now. So he did a number of uh, preseasons with the Brumbies um, as an academy player. Um, he became a, an EDS player, an elite development player, um, which is a part time contract. Um, he stayed in that full-time program throughout the course of, of 2020 through injury, was, was given opportunity. Uh, and off the back of probably two years of work being put into him, he made his debut uh, for the Brumbies. In the lead-up to even making a debut, I like to expose boys to even, even, a, even a game day build-up, um, do, do the warm-up with the group, sit in on unit meetings, sit in on team meetings, sit in, in the gold room at the AIS there where we do our preparation before we walk over to the stadium. Just so that it, it, where possible, you've experienced it all um, and, and, and nothing's new to you. And then when you run out, you, you, you can just uh, run out with a really clear mindset or headspace and, and, and go out there and perform your role. I'd imagine some of your live scrum sessions would be harder than most Super Rugby games anyway with some <laughs> of the people you got there. <laughs> yeah, you know, they are. It's, uh, yeah, no, the, the, the scrum and, 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 and mall sessions are... Uh, have, uh, have taken their toll on, on on a number of blokes over the years. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, I've always uh, I've had enormous respect for guys like Slips and Al and Scotty and these boys that just do it year after year, season after season. Um, and you know, this year for myself, having gone from Super Rugby into into Test Rugby, and I'm just sitting in the coach's box. It's no toll on my body at at, or, at all. But uh, you know, what they put their bodies through at training from one day to the next and then go out there and perform year after year after year, uh, you know, you take, take your hat off to them. Hey, anyone that's played a hundred tests in the front row for their country is incredible. I don't care what anyone says. That's it. I was going to ask you about the Brumbies. I've, I know quite a few boys who've been there and, you know, you hear things about the culture and, and, you know, 
universally, the thing that I can see as an outsider is that they're all good blokes. So, so as a head coach, how do you how do you attack the recruitment side of it in terms of because you want good rugby players, you, you need guys who are going to be up to that level, but you also want good human beings who are going to fit in and add to the culture. Yeah. What's your what's your process as someone who's in charge and, and manages that process for getting the right people around you in terms of coaches and players and support staff? Do you have a process for that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Look, there's there's three things that I, that I look at. Um, it's work ethics, the first thing. You, you will not survive uh, as a professional coach uh, or player if you don't have uh, a thirst for, for hard work. Um, you've got to have talent. There's, there's no doubt you, you've got to have talent to, to get to this level um, and, and, you know, be able to perform um, consistently at, um, you know, at shoot shield level or, or, you know, these days, even, uh, even at first 15 level, you, you know, you're looking at players at a very young age. Uh, and the other big thing for me is character. Um, so when I coached Souths in Brisbane, uh, back, I started back in 2007. Um, it was all about just getting the best players, you know, the best players you could to, to, to try and win a, uh, a hospital's cup with, with Souths in Brisbane um, now, now you've got to have talent, as I said, but you, you've got to have good people. You've got to have character, good character amongst the group. You know, just having been back here the last couple of days, um, you know, the young boys that we've brought into our program this year, um, you can just see that they, you know, they're, they're the right fit for the Brumbies immediately, and that there's a number of guys that the general public or the rugby community wouldn't even be aware of at the moment, who I know are going to be long-term players here over the next um, five to five to ten years. Um, so they're the three things that I look for. I also love a player um, or a coach um, that, that is just really hungry for an opportunity and has potentially faced a little bit of adversity somewhere else. You know, that's they're, they're the ones that haven't been given the red carpet treatment. You know, they didn't necessarily play Australian schools and 20s and, and straight into, into first grade or straight into a franchise. They've, they've had to do the, do the hard yards because those guys generally really appreciate it. You know, you, I'm talking about your Andy Muirheads. Um, your Benny Hines. Um, I look at someone now, our, our attack coach Rod Saib. Um, you know, Saibi, when Peter Hewitt left, um, I've looked all around the, the, the country for, for good backs, attack coaches, and there's plenty of them out there. Saibi's been coaching, uh, teaching, and educating young people for you know years, the best part of 20 years, um, and, and he's been a great fit. And and Someone who, um, you know, unless you give these people an opportunity, you're never going to know how good they actually are. And, and he's turned out to be a great fit for, for our program. When, you, when you're looking for, for players or coaches, is, is it, do, do you, you obviously do your research on them. They've got to have performed and have the talent. But do, do, you, do you meet them? Do you talk to them? Yeah. Is, it, is it you get a bit of a gut feel? You ask people about them? Is, is, yeah. that, is that how you go about it? Yeah, no, that's 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 how that's how you go about it, um, w- without a doubt. Yeah, I'll give you an ex- an example of um, like R- young Rajan Pasatoa, like when he's he's obviously gone to the force now. But um, you know, I flew up and and, and had breakfast with uh, him and his family, uh, watched him play for Nudgee um, against Brisbane Grammar, um, got him down um, to train with us, uh, presented to him um, on on how we'd make him a better footballer and. And, and a better person, um, and uh, you know, made made his parents feel really comfortable on on that if he did decide to come to Canberra, that um, that he'd be well supported and, and well looked after. You talk to their coaches, you know, and sometimes you talk to their teachers um, to get an, a real idea on their character. And you don't necessarily talk to people who you know are just going to say um, that he's 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 awesome, that he's unreal. You need to um, dig deep and, and make sure that you, you, you're getting the, the person that. Um, that, uh, that you really want to get. And um, so that's a process that we'd go through with um, any player that goes on any uh, contract here from, from EDS all the way through to a, a full contract. So we kind of talked about this a little bit, but the, the human element of coaching. So to, this was my first year of coaching and it probably shouldn't have surprised me, but the amount of, the, the, the amount of time you spend on human beings and, you know, giving people feedback and managing expectations and, you know, some crazy stuff off field that I won't talk about. But mm. as, a, as a head coach, how much of your life is spent managing people versus actually coaching rugby? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I, I I couldn't give you an exact figure. My guess would be 50-50, um, but it's the, the people management um, is uh, it's more now than ever, uh, and it will probably, probably end up being... Um, uh, you know, more down that side uh, in terms of uh, the percentage. Um, but, you know, I think as a head coach, it, what's really important now is you need to have good good people around you that you can trust um, to, um, to, to do a lot of the, a lot of the on-field coaching so that, so that I, can, I can manage the group, I can manage the environment, I can talk to my players, I can talk to my staff. Your players always want feedback. Uh, they want to know, you know, how, how they're performing if they're in the 23 if they're not in the 23, they want to know what they've got to do to get into the side. Um, staff want to know if they're doing a good job. Uh, I don't think there's, there's, there's too many... Um, most issues for me at any organisation or any business or any team uh, will always come back to poor communication. Um, so you just got to talk to your people and, and your people need to make sure that they feel really valued um, with, with the role and the, and the job that they're doing. But you've got to be honest with them as well. Um, if, if players just aren't... Uh, cutting the mustard, then, then I, I need to tell them that. But I also need to provide them and help them with solutions on, on, on how they can improve and, and, uh, and, and get better. But uh, the, the people management for me, how, how do you nail it? It's, it's a communication thing. Uh, it all comes back to just talking to them regularly and often and making sure that they understand what they've got to do to get in the team or, or that they're really clear on what their role is to, um, to stay in the team. Do you seek people out or do they come to you usually for, for feedback? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, uh, depends on the individual. Um, you know, it's, uh, some young players will come and bang down your door and, and, and say good day to you and, and, uh, and introduce themselves. And, and, and I had that when I was back for a week, um, uh, in between, uh, the, the, the Wallaby season this year and then others, you know, they're just quite shy and, and, uh, um, and, you know, aren't, aren't as open to walking into the coach's office and, and, uh, and, and, and introducing themselves. So it's a bit of both. Um, but again, you know, how, how you build connections and make them feel comfortable and let them know that and, and understand as quickly as possible that oh, I was just, I'm just a player. I'm just a player who's, who's become a coach. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to bite or, you know, I'll, uh, if, um, you know if, if I've got to tell them the truth and, and be pretty blunt at times, then I'll do that. But, um, but, but I'll, I'll also make sure that... Uh, that um, I give them an ear or, or let them know that I'm here to support them and, and look after them both on field and off field. And I think once they understand that, walking in here and saying, Dan, have you got five minutes to go through a couple of clips or can we just have a chat um, about something that's totally unrelated to rugby, they feel more comfortable doing. What about with your assistant coaches? So, so as a head coach, I mean, you've, you've got some outstanding assistant coaches. I mean, three props in your coaching stuff. Or oh, did Laurie play hooker? I think he was a he hooker, was a hooker, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah hooker, three three fried rowers, yeah. and and outstanding coaches. In terms of managing the the coaching staff, h- how do you go about that? So, you, do you have your specific roles that guys um, that guys have within the team, and then as the head coach, do you do you step in when you need to, or do you guys coach as a team? Yeah. Or or what's the process for the guys down there at the Brumbies? Yeah, we, we've certainly all got our own roles and areas of responsibility, but. Um, if you've, I'm not sure if you've ever been down here, Dunk, but um, it's an open planned office. Um, I'm, not, I'm not tucked away in, in an office, um, hidden away from others. We, we have a, a number of conversations. We just talk about rugby. We talk about the game. So um, I might, you know, even just this morning, um, watching training from, from, from yesterday, um, I talked to Laurie about defence, um, what, what he's seeing, what I'm seeing. Laurie might uh, pipe up and say a couple of things to Sybe about what he's what he's seeing in attack, um, so it's a it's a really collaborative sort of uh, approach to how to how we coach. Uh, you know, we we have robust discussions. There's there's no doubt. We've got enormous respect for one another. Um, every now and then, we'll 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 disagree on something. At the end of the day, um, I've got to make a decision. Um, but I, I've, you, you know, you, you spoke about the, the quality of coaches that I've got, and I think that the best coaches surround themselves with 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 very good coaches. Um, I'm fortunate to have that down here and you've got to trust them to do their job. Um, and, and if you micromanage and, um, and, and, and you want to do everything yourself, then you won't last too long. Is that something you had to learn? Did that come pretty naturally to you? 
Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's probably been a, a little development um, of, of myself just even over the last sort of six months. Like I've, I've been away from the Brumbies. Um, I've kept in touch. We've had a lot of Zooms, a lot of conversations. Um, we've made some changes to our program with how we train here. Um, so coming back in uh, yesterday was the first day for me in front in front of the players. It felt, you know, I said to the boys, this this feels a little weird, boys. You know, like I'm, uh, um, you know, I'm um, uh, I, I don't want to come in here and and um, and chop and change and say, right, what you've done over the last six months is is uh, is out the window. Now we're going back to how Dan wants to do things. That that that'd be so disrespectful and and wrong. Um, you know, we've reviewed uh, 2021. We've made changes as a coaching group. Um, I was in a position where I could uh, I was offered an opportunity with the Wallabies. Uh, I took it because I, I, I trust the people that I've got here and I've got to sh- continue to show that trust, um, not just over pre-season, but throughout the course of the year. I've got to be a bit selfish and ask you some forwards coaching questions, yeah. if, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm in no rush, mate. <laughs> how, how do you attack – Well, like at, at the moment, this is my first time really designing sessions and – you got a limited amount of time each week to get through quite a lot of content, you know, attacking lineouts, defending lineouts, attacking malls, defensive malls, scrums. And then you've got to get the conditioning element in around that as well. How, how did you attack it? Or how do you attack it with the Brumbies? Cause, cause everything that you put in, you got to take something away. Do you have a process for going, this is the most valuable thing that we've got to do, do it first and then get that to a standard that you're happy with. And then, Go to something else and then circle back to it. What's yeah. what's your approach with that? Oh, yeah, well, with with any forward pack, the key to any forward pack is uh, is quality set piece. That's you know that that's the cornerstone of any of any forward pack. So, you know, we'll we'll have um, positional trademarks um, in our team room of uh, for for all positions, but for um, the tight five and, and the back row, it's it's about world class set piece. Um, and if you want to have world class set piece, you, you got to invest in it, and you got to invest time in it, and you've got to train it. Um, we have this time of year, we'll have two one hour unit sessions um, a week. And now I, I talk to a lot of other coaches, and, and um, uh, they'll often talk about how, how limited they are, how, how much time they have to um, work on line out or, or work on mall um, or work on scrum. Um, so it's often rushed. There's a lot of detail that goes into set piece coaching, as you know, mate. So you, you've certainly got to invest in it um, and, and allow time for it and, and train it. Um, drill it, um, train it in, in, a, in an environment where it's not under pressure, um, where you can work on good technique, uh, good quality drill. Um, and then you obviously add layers to that as you go um, through putting it under pressure um, under pressure through through competition, under pressure through competition as well as fatigue. I'll always start with attack to, to begin with. So now I'm, at the moment, I'll focus on on our line out attack and, and, and our mall attack um, first and foremost. At the same time as working with palms on scrum, and then we'll go to uh, then I'll start to look at uh, our, our line out defence and our mall defence uh, as as we get closer to games. We still invest a lot of time in it. Obviously, any time you're mauling, there's two sides of the ball. So you, you've, you've got to attack and, you, and you've got to defend. So without even knowing it, they're getting work on their defence. But it's uh, for me, it's it's about investing uh, time in it and, and, and celebrating it and, and, and recognising it when it's done really well. Um, I'd spend a lot of time in, in, in Ford's meetings reviewing, um, reviewing more uh, the detail around it, reviewing line out the detail around what, what I call our, our non-negotiables that give us uh, world-class drill. Uh, and then that builds on into into the collision area that um, that is the next part uh, of, of any uh, good forward pack is if, if, if you want to be a good pack then you, you've got to win the collision and be good on both sides of the ball. Is it so just say when you guys sit down to plan your preseason, do you go do you work backwards and go, this is where I want to take us and then we just work back from there and just say we hit hit a mark earlier than we expect, we progress. Or, or is it a case of just throw everything at them and then fill in the detail as you go? Yeah, I, I wouldn't work backwards. Um, I'd, you know, I, I'd have I'd have a plan in terms of um, what systems I want to implement in and around line out, um, how quickly we want to progress in and around mall, um, and 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 often um, you progress quicker than you than you expect, which which allows you to move on to. Uh, the next layer and, and, and to build on on the things that you're already working on. 
Um, and, and that's that's the key for, for me. I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say to you, mate, that I, I know what my my uh, my Ford's unit session plan is on on February two. What that's going to be, uh, you know, I'm not. Uh, I've got a fair idea. I've been doing it a long a long time now, and I understand what works and what doesn't work. You always need to grow and improve and develop and 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 have uh, variation to what you're doing. But um, for me, it's it's about having a plan. Um, I'd, I'd work probably no, no longer than sort of two to three weeks in advance um, because going beyond that for me is, um, you know, you, you're just starting to, uh, to, to waste time. And I guess one week your more might not be functioning as well for some reason. So the next couple of weeks you might want to spend additional time on it. So if you've already pre-planned it, it's kind of throwing everything out the door anyway. That's right. What about giving guys feedback? You mentioned it before. How do you how do you attack that for in session versus video versus before session? What's what's your process there? Yeah, um, as as I said uh, before, I think you know the, the really good coaches see it there and then um, and, and can provide instant feedback. But um, and and that's that's a challenge. And I, I think you as your knowledge, um, your experience. Um, develops over time as a coach, you start to see things uh, sooner or, or before you would have in the past, um, and that's that, you know that's what the good coaches do. But um, as I said, you don't want to be uh, talking the whole time. So f- for me, a lot of it is this is why you have unit meetings, team meetings, individual meetings, one-on-one meetings with players, um, so that you can. Uh, you know, look look at the finer details. Um, understand what right? Oh, why why did we miss that line out by half an inch? Um, why why did that mall fall three meters short? Um, and then you can provide r- really clear um, feedback uh, to uh, to the players, and so they've got a clear understanding of 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 what they need to do better the next time. Um, that that's it. That's it for me. And and as I said, I, I think you know your sessions. Uh, you want to error correct and critique guys on the run, but you also need to get through the work you need to get through, knowing that uh, that meetings are there to review. So just just say you're doing a review meeting or a forwards meeting, would that be? So just say you've you've just done a line out scrum more session. Mm. Is is the review before the next forward session, yeah. so that's fresh in their brains, or do you do it straight after? No, uh, we, we would do it before the next before the next meeting. So uh, we did a small line out block yesterday. We've got another uh, unit session on Friday, so we would uh, have, have a uh, have a unit meeting. Um, you know, we'd allow up to half an hour for that meeting, where, where where again we can look at you know the things that I presented. So I'll, I'll always review against uh, my non-negotiables. Um, you know, the, the points that I think deliver us world class drill, um, and then the specifics around what's an excellent front lift look like, what's an excellent back lift look like. Um, you know what's 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 a world class mall look like, and uh, and provide feedback from from there. What about putting some of the responsibility back onto the players? Do you do you Palms and Laurie pretty much manage it yourself, or do you do you throw any any element of the game back to the players to give the team feedback or to own that area of the game? Yeah, we'll we'll actually uh, every every year, I and mean, we're just starting to go through that process now. Is that we'll have. Um, attack leaders. Um, we'll have leaders who will who look after our clearance um, and, and review our clearance and, and potentially present on it throughout the year. Um, it'll be the same in and around defence, our phase defence, our pendulum with our back three, um, wingers, fullbacks and tens. It'll be responsible for that. Um, I'll have line out and more leaders. Palms will have will have scrum leaders. Um, and I think, you know, the, the big thing for me around uh, leadership and developing leaders is you've got to put them in a position where they have to lead um, and give them responsibility too. And so the expectation from us would be that the leaders of that particular component will come to us first thing Monday morning with clips on, on our attack, um, positive or, or, or work-ons, um, and then we compare them. Uh, and, and a lot of the time... What Laurie's got cut in defence compared to what James Slipper and uh, Len Nicotau and Rob Bellatini have got cut, uh, they're often mirror up uh, really closely, you know, and that's, uh, I suppose that's a good thing. That means that they're listening to the messaging, um, the key coaching points, the, the principles that, that Laurie or, or Sylvie would push from an attack and, and defence point of view. 
Uh, and then at times we'll, we'll expose them to presenting in front of the group in, in meetings. You know, I think gone are the days of the old school teacher uh, style coaching where you sit, stand out the front and tell them what's right and what's wrong. Uh, the players need to be able to identify it and, um, and, and take responsibility for it themselves. I was, I was going to ask about that. So obviously when you've been coaching at a place for a long time and you see guys week in, week out, all year, uh, even if you've got a great voice, they're still going to get sick of your voice a little bit. So did yeah. is is that when you'll you'll throw one of the senior players or the leadership group in to to you know preview or review a session so that it's just not one yeah. of you guys just talking over and over again? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And look, I've I've done that in the past. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, I think it was two thousand and twenty, um, and we just we just weren't happy with. Uh, with where we're at from a, from a mall perspective. Um, and so I'd been talking to the boys for, for, for a number of weeks. So I, I just uh, tapped James Slipper and, and Lockie McCaffrey on the shoulder and said, right, you boys go down and cut some clips. Uh, come, come see me with, uh, with what, you know, your pictures, your vision, what your key messages are. Um, and, uh, and I'll get you to present it. And, and they did, you know, from a playing point of view and, and you know the players appreciate that as well. Um, at the end of the day, we're in the coach's box on on uh, on Friday or Saturday evening or, or Sunday afternoon, and there's only so much we can do. So you've got to uh, enable them to take responsibility and and, and take ownership and, and and lead from the front themselves. Is, is coaching a Ford pack at Super Rugby level different from Test level? Uh, again, I, I'd say it is because of time. Um, you know, before the French series, you've got a couple of weeks uh, to, to to get to get them all on the same page and aligned. Uh, you know, we had guys like um, Matty Phillip who was coming back from from France, uh, had to quarantine late and, and that sort of thing. So, whereas it's it's, it's super rugby level, um, you know, you've got time. Even even now, like our Wallaby boys will come back next week, but we'll still have uh, six weeks leading into round one. So it's still it's, it's still plenty of time to 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 work with. Whereas at, at test level, it's um it's yeah you're certainly restricted. Um, it's a busy program, um, and uh, and you've got to really prioritise, especially that front end on 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 what's important to you and what you think is going to help win a test match um, in in those first couple of games. Um, just on that, how much work will you do on the opposition? Will you delegate? Uh, we delegate responsibilities to your line-out leader, your scrum leader, or, or as a coach, are you overviewing everything and then making sure players are doing it as well? Yeah, I, I'd certainly, I'd look at all areas of, of the game with preview with previewing opposition. So I would look at how, how we're going to attack, um, what, what are our tactics, what's our strategy, um, h- how are we going to kick? Sybil's doing exactly the same. Then myself and Sybil are going to have a conversation um, again, with Laurie, um, around what our um, what our plan is, how we want to attack offline, at how we how we want to attack um, in multi phase from counter attack, um, same defensively. You know, what what are their threats? Um, where do we need to make sure we're on our game from a defensive point of view? As head coach, you've got to be across all of that. Um, and then I've got my own area where I need to make sure that I'm I'm I'm, I'm well across, and that, and that's obviously from a set piece point of view. Yep. Well, I give responsibility to the players. You know, your Darcy Swains, Caden Neville's. You know, in the past, Sammy Carter, Rory Arnold. These guys, yeah, definitely. Um, and and again, uh, I'll ask them to have a look at uh, vision. Um, I'll do exactly the same. You come together and compare notes and thoughts, and and a lot of the time, it's well aligned. Um, sometimes I'll have a different thought, and and the, and the players will love it. Sometimes they'll have a have a different thought, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. We'll give that a crack. So. But um, head coach, you've got to have your finger on, on, on all areas of the game. But as I said before, at the same time, make sure that you trust uh, the, the, the coaches that are responsible for that particular area to, to do their job well. And, and when, when you're presenting it to the group, do you, do you throw everything at them? Do you, do you go, this is a couple of key points for attack. This is a yeah. couple of key points for defence. How, how do you make sure you get the information across? without underwhelming or overwhelming them? Yeah, that's it. You know, we talk so much at... at uh, a professional uh, level about um, you know physical load, um, but mental load is is massive as well. There's uh, there's only so much information that players can 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 take on board. Um, the key for me is at seven forty five on Saturday night, 
um, is that you run onto the field and your headspace and, and mindset is so clear that you can just go out and do what you do naturally um, and, and perform your role well. And that's that's what we drive here at the Brumbies is individually you do your role well, then collectively it'll, it'll, it'll look after its, uh, itself. Monday for us is what we call an install day. So that's where we would, um, you know, bed down how we're going to play strategically, uh, how, how we're going to attack. Tuesday, we'd start to look at preview of the opposition. Every week, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd have, you know, two or three key points max, um, not, not five or six. Um, in the past, would I have had five or six? Yeah, I, I would have, but, you know, it, it's too much information. Just two or three really simple points. A lot of the time, they won't change a whole lot from one week to the next. There might be one point that changes um, off the back of uh, the opposition that you're playing. Uh, and again, then the boys feel re- really clear around um, what's important, um, how, we're, how we're attacking, how we're defending, what are the key points that we're going to review against on Monday so that they can go out there and, and, uh, and do their job well. Do, do you have some way of checking that the information's actually sunk in? Because I've, I've seen a lot of team meetings where the coach is talking and the players are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they'll go out in the field and just do nothing that you just talked about. Is, is, do you have some sort of way of checking? Or is, it, or is it just a matter of looking at what they're doing on field and going, yeah, they're getting it? Yeah. Oh, you, look, you can use a number of different tools. Uh, you know, I know from a Wallaby point of view, we'd use cahoots. Um, you know, with, a quiz game? Yeah, little quizzes yeah. And, and, uh, and, and, and test them on, on different areas. Of the game, I've done it a couple of times with the Fords. Dave uh, would do that uh, every week um, around counter attack and, and 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 what our strategy is there. Um, really, really good tool. Um, do I feel I need to do that every week? No, I don't, um, because as I said, I don't like to give them a whole lot of information and overload them with information from one week to the next. You've got you know you've got your core game and ha- how you want to play. Um, how, how the Brumbies play, what's, what's our identity, what's our DNA, and, and, and we stick to that, understanding that through analysis and previewing the opposition that you need to tweak um, your strategy or your tactics from, from one week to the next. I've got, I got to ask you about mauling, and then I'll throw some rapid questions at you. And yeah, I'll right. let you go, mate. I, I, I watch a lot of rugby, and I've got no statistics to back this up, so it might just be my perception, but I'm, I'm thinking that generally defensive mauling has improved significantly significantly all over the world, and, and there's less maul tries. It mm-hmm. is, what are you seeing at Wallaby level um, and just generally around the world in terms of mauling? Yeah, no, you're right. That's that, that's accurate. Um, that that maul defence has, has, has certainly improved. Um over the last, uh, you know, probably 12, 12 months to two years um, in, in particular. Um, look, I, I think I'm really frustrated with what teams are getting away with defensively at mall time at the moment, um, especially up north. Um, and it's so tough for a referee to, to sit there and, and watch 16 bodies bash each other and make sure that someone's um, doing the right thing in attack, um, not coming down the side in defence. But, uh, you know, there, there's, there's some frustrations there around, uh, you know, side entry and, and, and players creeping down the side of a mall. You're not allowed to slide down the side of a ruck. So yeah. uh, it, it astounds me that all of a sudden we're allowed to slide down the side of a mall. So I think there's some areas there that if we want mauling, which is to me is part of the fabric of our game. Um, it's such a special part of the game. Um, and, and people look at mauling and think, oh, it's just, it's just the forwards bashing each other. But you've got to understand that a good maul compresses opposition backline defence. It creates one-on-one opportunity for backlines to attack against each other, just like a scrum does. It allows you to be uh, innovative and, and have variation around what you do if you've got a good maul. Because if you've got a good maul, what does the opposition need to do? They have to defend it. So they commit numbers that create space for others. So if we uh, if we want the maul to continue to be an important part and stay part of the fabric of rugby union, then we need to look at what's being allowed currently with, uh, with maul defence. Um, and you know, like like any area of the game, you're always going to stretch the boundaries and and, um, and 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 try and get away with certain things. But there's some clear and obvious things at the moment that uh, that should well and truly be penalised and would have been penalised uh, 18 months ago. Yeah, like there's I've seen some things in the UK where they grab a guy and then they almost rotate around the back of the wall yeah. so that they're on the other yeah. side and the refs looking at them. So. Yeah. I, it must be legal, or, or they're just not refereeing it because he hasn't changed his bond or something like that. But uh, it's uh, yeah, and you know you go you go to the Wales game uh, for me 
Falau should have uh, it should have been a penalty try, you know, in a really important moment in that right corner. Um, just uh, you know, with with about ten minutes to go. But um, as I said, I'm, I'm certainly not blaming referees. It's it's a really tough job for them. I think um, it's uh, from World Rugby is 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 what they want a, a, a mall to look like, and, and what they want legal defence to look like is something that needs to be uh, closely uh, closely looked at and, and, and changed. Are you seeing any trends uh, develop in the game, or, or where do you see it going in terms of forward play? Just the game in general, it feels like guys are getting more and more athletic. Is, is that just going to keep happening? Are there going to be generic positions apart from like yeah, your front row positions? Well, what are you seeing? Uh, I, I think at the moment the game is really defence orientated, um, and and it's it's heavily favours uh, the the defence, um, and which is why I think you're seeing you know a, a lot of box kicking, a lot of kicking uh, through, throughout the games. You look at the South Africa and British and Irish Lions series. I mean that that would put anyone to sleep. Um, and, I enjoyed it. <laughs> you're a professional and a professional coach. You know what I mean? It was it was it was hard to watch. Um, so I, I think we need to get the balance right in terms of uh, uh, giving teams the confidence to attack from from anywhere on the field. Um, that's 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 the big one for uh, for me is that we're too heavily focused on and and, and favour the defensive team too much at the moment. Um, yeah, athletes, great athletes, powerful, bigger, faster, stronger. Um, they're bigger, faster, stronger now than what they were ten years ago. Uh, in 2032, I'm sure it'll, it'll be a step up again. It's just it's just how uh, the nature of sports science and, and how players uh, are allowed to develop and continue to get better and better um, through through sports science and and, and, and programs that, that are developed. So, but uh, overall, I think uh, you know rugby's a great game and, and, and still is in really good shape. I think the 2023 World Cup, we just want to make sure that it's a spectacle. Um, and then it's not uh, box kick to box kick because teams are, are scared to uh, scared to attack. Yeah, I, I, I've made this argument many times that rugby played well is the best advertisement for the game, but conversely, rugby played badly is a terrible advertisement for the game. Yeah. Uh, um, a yeah. couple of rapid fire for you, mate. And I'll, I'll let you go. I'm really grateful for your time. Do, do, do you listen to many podcasts? Oh, when I can. Um, yeah. So I've, I've, you know, I've listened. I've listened to a couple of yours. Um, uh, you know, at, at the moment, um, actually, I've you know, this is my final year at the Brumbies, so uh, my, my my wife and girls are, are back in Brisbane, so I'm sort of batching it for um, for this season. So I've I've um, made the commitment that I, I, I want to listen to a, a, a podcast, um, you know, every sort of two or three days, or I want to do something that's going to allow me to to learn and, and grow and, and get better as a coach every couple of days. Um, so they, they certainly interest me. There, there's no doubt. And, and and these days, there's, you know, to, to be able to sit there here and mate, listen to you chat to Wayne Smith or or Laurie Fisher, like you know, t- ten years ago, that would not have been possible. It's uh, it's a you know, a real uh, a real great exposure for good up and young young uh, up and coming coaches to listen to guys of that quality. Do you, do you have any go tos that you, you go to regularly, or is it just a matter of people come to you, or, or things will pop out, and you go, "Yeah, I like that." Can, can you throw any names at me? No, nah, no, nah, they're all pretty random. I get, I get them sent to me. Um, I listened to a good one, uh, a couple of. Is it uh, Cody Royal? Um, I think uh, he, he did one um, with uh, with Anthony Seabold, who, who I know well. Um, Spent some time with him when he was at South and he came down here and, and also when he was at the Broncos, really good bloke, um, outstanding coach who, who, you know, went through a really tough period at the Broncos there. And he openly spoke about that experience and, 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 and what he learned from it, what he'd do differently. Um, and, and, you know, I've had him on here. I've had him on here as well. I'm a big, big fan of that guy. He's awesome. Yeah. No, good man. Cool. Really, really good man. Very genuine. And, and, and a guy who's really passionate about, um, sharing information and helping educate and, and, and mentor other coaches. Do you read much? Uh, I've probably got six or seven books sitting on my bedside table. Um, before when you I get to it? It's, uh, that, are, that are part read. It's, uh, normally I'd use the, uh, the post-Super Rugby period um, to, to read and, and, and do PD. I remember at the end of 2018, myself and Peter Hewitt went over to to Leinster and Saracens and spent a week with them, you know, during that period, read, read a number of books and, and those sort of times are, 
Um, you know, they're really good for, for a coach. Allows you to reflect and and uh, and learn new things, but also at the same time, a lot of the time, um, you know, just reassure yourself that what you're doing is is, is working as well. Um, so uh, I, sh- I should read more, but mate, by the time I put my head on the pillow, I, I get through three pages and I'm cooked. Um, but um, you know, it's something that's uh, again, I'll uh, I'll hopefully uh, 2022, I'll do more of it. When was the last time you had a significant change of mind? In any aspect of life, footy, family, whatever. From a footy point of view, it would be uh, 2020 when I had to call Dave Rennie and tell him that I couldn't coach the Wallaby Ford Pack. That was a significant change of mind. And <laughs> in a conversation that uh, I drove around for about half an hour, you know, press because Dave's such a good human being. He's such a good bloke. And he, he offered me the chance um, to, to join the Wallabies um, with him from, from day one. Uh, COVID hit, things changed. Huey got an opportunity to go to Japan, security there for him and his family, which I fully understood. Uh, at that point in time, mate, I, I, I wasn't prepared to, to leave the Brumbies and leave Laurie on his own here and let all the hard work that we've done here over the last five years unravel or potentially unravel. You know, it wouldn't have been fair on the organisation or, or on Laurie, so... I did make a tough call there and, and, and um, you know, that was, I, I, you know, Dave certainly was disappointed and, and, and probably wasn't happy with me for, for a period of time there, but he understood. Um, and thankfully for me, he was uh, that understanding that he, he gave me another chance uh, 12 months later. What, uh, what made you change your mind 12 months later? The circumstances? Thought, uh, Rod Seib. So Rod Seib was here. Laurie was yeah. here. Brad Mayo um, was here, who was our head of performance. So John Mitchell, our previous head of performance, also uh, moved to Queensland for family reasons at, at that time. Um, so I had a group of staff that I know would um, run the program um, really well and, uh, and and guys that I could trust. And, uh, and mate, that's, um, you know, I, I thank them in the, in the team meeting yesterday. The, the job that they've done over the last five or six months has been uh, unbelievable. And, and, and without them, I wouldn't be able to, to take the opportunity that was, uh, that was offered to me. Are you working on anything currently in terms of your own development as a coach, as a human? Is there any hobbies you do? Anything, anything like that? Um, oh, mate, hobbies. I do, any spare time I get, I just, I just try and exercise, uh, to be honest. Um, and, and, and look after my, look after myself. I think that's that was something that came out of Siebes' podcast, actually, is that what he something he did really well at the Rabbitohs was self-care. And I think that's really important, um, you know, is you've got to look after yourself um, and you've got to look after your family and your loved ones and, and invest time in them. You know, I remember when I first uh, – my first full-time coaching role was with Tuggeron Vikings. And, um, you know, we train at, at 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock at night, Tuesday and Thursday – Mate, the hours and the work that I put in back then was was huge, um, and you know I probably forgot about what was most important, and that was that was your family. So over time, you understand that you know, it's a lot of that's not even productive. Um, so just you know make sure that when I walk through the doors, I expect the players to be bouncing through the gates and and looking forward to training. As an individual, I've got to be making sure that I do exactly the same. So that's something that I took out of that podcast, is it, and and something that I thought of as well as that you got to look after yourself. Um, but what I'm looking after mostly, mate, or working on mostly is, is just trying to win a super rugby title and, uh, and, and also create really positive stories for, for the game in, in this country. Um, it's something I'm really passionate about. I hate it when, when our own people bag our, our game um, or, or get stuck into it. Let's get on board and, 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 uh, and make rugby uh, in this country, um, you know, great again, great to watch and, and get the Wallabies ready to uh, help win a World Cup. I couldn't agree more. And I, I, that's something I've been trying to do with the podcast, is if you if you know the stories of the guys involved in the sport, you're far more likely to support them because yeah. every every single one of them has had to struggle to get where they are. Yeah. And um, I, I think if you know someone struggles, you re- you get to know that person and appreciate their journey. Yeah. A couple more, couple more questions for you, mate. H- how do you get to sleep after one of those late-night test matches? I can imagine there's adrenaline. You know, you're either ecstatic at the end of it, or I'm sure, like most coaches, there's some elements that you're not happy with. Yeah. Or, or you, or you lose and you're devastated. 
how have you managed to deal with that this year? Yeah, that's that's really tough, honestly, because the, the you know you, you, the players you talk to the players and 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 for them to get to to, to get to sleep after a game will will take hours. Um, and and mate, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Um, it's generally easier after a win, but even after a win, you know, you've just sung the Brumbies team team song, given Quinzo a hug in the dressing shed. We parked the protein shakes for the night and and had a couple of beers and and just enjoyed each other's company. Um, but you're buzzing, you know, you're really buzzing, or it's the same, you know, after after a test win, um, you know, there's, there's nothing better than uh, than seeing the stands at Suncorp Stadium, chocker block, and and people feeling really proud to to sit there and witness the Wallabies knock off the world champions. You know, it's unreal. Um, so look, I I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, I'll, I'll have a beer, I'll want to have a Shiraz with the wife and and uh, and, and 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 shut the eyes and 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 do your best. But um, I do think it. it you know, throughout the season, you, you, you're sort of on autopilot. Then you wake up early the next day and it's like, right, oh, where's the laptop? Let's go and review. Let's get my clips ready for for uh, for Monday's meeting. You know, let's meet as a coaching group, review together. You're just on autopilot and then you sort of crash and burn um, come come November, December at the uh, at the end of the year. <laughs> um, it's hard work, but it's, uh, as I said, mate, it's, uh, it's, we're in a privileged position and, you, and you've got to pinch yourself and remind yourself of that every day of the week. So you're not one of those maniacs that'll review the game the night after or that that same night? Nah, no. I, I reckon I've done that once or, or, or twice in my life. Um, and uh, no, you look, you might go back and have a look at particular events or, um, but I, you know, I just don't think that's healthy. I think you um, you need to just park it for a few hours and, and then get stuck into it the next day. Mate, I couldn't agree more. L- last question for you, mate. I'm so grateful for this. What advice would you give 18 year old Dan McKellar? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 interesting. So I'm a player, right? I'm not an I'm not an 18 year old coach. I'm not coaching the. the well, it could coach, be any uh, could be any uh, aspect uh, of life, wherever you want to take it. Yeah, look, I, I think as a, as a player, or, you know, I'd, I'd say to myself, uh, in, in, enjoy your mates, um, enjoy your life. But if, if, if you want to be a good rugby player or you want to be good at anything in, the, in this world, you, you need to be prepared to make sacrifices um, and, and, and understand that without sacrifice, um, you'll struggle to achieve anything uh, great. And that's, uh, you know, that was probably uh, my, you know, that's, that's the advice that I'd, I'd give myself um, as, as an 18-year-old player. Um, you know, I think in life in general, um, you know, just be happy, appreciate, appreciate your family. Appreciate the people that you care about uh, most, and that's you know your your friends, your family, your mum, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, um, your wife, your kids. Because um, you see every day, don't you? You know, like there's there's just tragic events that happen from one day to the next, um, where, where where life can can change like that. Um, so that's you know that's something that I probably haven't been great at at, at times, but um, for me, it's about uh, that, that's that's really important moving forward. I, I, I lied to you. I got one more question. I'm sorry. I, for, I forgot to ask. Would you, what advice do you frequently give coaches? If you had to give them one piece of advice or if someone goes, Hey Dan, what's some advice or something that I should do if I want to become a good coach? Yeah, look, it's, it, it'll be the same as when, when I was, um, you know, when I was coaching at, uh, at, at, at Souths, it's, um, you, you, you've got to work hard to um, every day to increase your, increase your knowledge uh, increase your knowledge of detail around the game um, because that as that grows then you become more and more confident to coach it to coach at any level um, and I remember when I was at, at Tuggeron I'd come out to the Brumbies and I'd talk to Jake White I'd talk to Laurie um, uh, Steve Larkin didn't talk to me because he didn't like Tuggeron Vikings he's a West boy but um, no, he's a good man Bernie but uh, and, and you know off the back of that you build relationships they share information with you nowadays mate you listen to podcasts um, go, you know set, drop, drop me an email say I want to come and have a look at the Brumbies train and, and see how you do things and there's plenty of coaches out there that, that want to share and, and, and mentor and, and help make others better so that we bring the next generation through Um and that's really important, you know. Like it's it's always an open door policy here, and and uh, they were good enough to open the door back to me to me back in two thousand and eleven and twelve, and allow me to coach the Brumby Runners and 
and, and do that sort of thing. And, and, and now that's why, um, you know, we, we love seeing club coaches or school coaches uh, come down here and, and, um, and allow them to ask questions and pick your brain. And, and because at the end of the day, um, it's going to make them put a smile on their face, make them feel good about themselves and help improve them as a coach. Mate, um, I'll definitely do that at some point. I've been talking to Palms a little bit about that recently, so I'll, I'll definitely do that. Um, thank you so much for your time, Dan. I really appreciate it, mate. I'm uh, very happy for you. I, I hope you have a good year and uh, good luck with everything, Brumbies, Wallabies, and, mate, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, no, awesome. good man. Thank you. Duncan. Really, really appreciate it, mate. You're doing, uh, you're doing a great job. And, it's, uh, no, thanks, thanks for uh, inviting me on and, and, uh, and, and giving me your time, mate. I know there's a lot of work that goes into it from your end. And it's, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Right. Cheers, mate. Enjoy. You got a camp this weekend? Uh, we've had to put it off um, just because the, of the uh, C word. The C yeah, word's read it's yeah, it's just, yeah. you know, There's a few things floating around there. So we will postpone it for a little while. Okay, mate. Well, enjoy and um, all the best, mate. Good luck this year. Thank you very yeah. much. Good man. Cheers, mate. Catch you, catch you, Dan. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye.